News talks about it 14 after 11. I don't think this is necessary, but I'm going to do it anyway. Paul Robert Potts, born October 13, 1970, is a British tenor. In 2007, he won the first series of ITV's Britain's Got Talent with his performance of Nessun Dora. An aria from Puccini's opera Tornado. As a singer of operatic music, Potts recorded the album One Chance, which topped sales charts in nine countries. Prior to winning Britain's Got Talent, he was a manager of the Carphone Warehouse. He had served as Bristol's city councillor from 1996 to 2003, and he also performed in amateur op opera from 1999 to 2003. Now, while this is not his first visit to New Zealand, I've got to tell you that it is as far as I'm concerned. Paul Potts, good morning. Good morning, how are you? I'm very good. You have been in this studio before, I think it was 2009, we worked out. You look just like you, um, I'm using this line, I've used it on him already, but you look just like you do in a movie, one chance. <laughs> and, except my eyes changed back to brown. <laughs> were, you, were, you, were you really happy with that, with, with that performance? Um, with the acting? Yeah, yeah, I think I think James did a great job. He's um, he's a great actor. He's a great comic actor, and and he did the very difficult job of of combining comedy and and drama in one go. And 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 the only real instruction or request rather that I gave to the producers was that was that they make it a comedy because I didn't want it to be a documentary that would make people feel sorry for me or, or for it to be maudlin. I wanted it to cover some of the issues, but I wanted it, I, but I wanted it to be a movie that would make people smile. My wife and I watched it about um, three weeks ago on a Saturday night, and I have to tell you there were tears. Were, were they misplaced? You didn't know that? <laughs> I, I, I'm very happy that the movie does does move people. Um, it's, I, I'm glad the people that, that, have, that I've spoken to have all really enjoyed it, and um, it's... I think some of the people I've spoken to were expecting it to be a documentary, but but I, I always wanted it to be something that would make people feel good rather than... Rather than oh, the tears them. were tears of emotion, you know, of, of all sorts of, of feelings, emotions, mm. not not tears of of sadness, mm. but it was it was just that good, it was that moving, it was very touching. How much license was there in the dramatic license was there in the movie? Um, well, I can't really cover 43 years of life in an hour and 40 minutes very easily. So there was, there was some, but the, but the, it's a really good representation of how my life turned out, and and a lot of the things that, that have been dramatised a bit are things that I would do. They've 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 got my personality fairly well. Um, one 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 particular. Um, instance is the Puccini, not the Puccini, the Pavarotti masterclass, which in actual fact went quite well. Um, what they did is they, 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 they changed the situation of it and and um, made it a, 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 a like an audition in front of a panel and, 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 and just a few singers. And if I'd have been doing it in that circumstance, there's every chance that I would have completely lost my nerve because I have been there and I have done that mm. and, and I have been in, 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 in like an aesthetic class a, like a local singing competition where, where the only people watching me are, are my competitors and, and, and the person examining me and I have gone into that situation where I've had to go and get some water had to stop and start again and then just completely lose the words and, and so it, it's very realistic so but that wasn't the way that it turned out on that, that on that occasion. No, because it was more. Well, let me just let me just recap this. In in this scenario, Pavarotti's sitting there and he's and he's being quite Pavarotti-ish, I imagine, and um, quite curt, and you fell apart in the movie, mm. quite quite completely. You know, it was just it was it was terrible, and I related to that. And I'll tell you, mm. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why in a, in a minute. But um, it wasn't like that. No, it, it, it went really well, but mainly because I actually had a real audience there, not just people that were examining me. So that, it, it's, it's, it's quite, um, I'm trying to think of the word I'm trying to think of, but it's, it's quite bizarre in, in that I, am, I do tend to be quite shy and quite nervous. But if I've got a real audience, I'll feed off the audience. I, have, I, I can go into this particular place in my head that I go when I sing. 
but when I'm in exam and it's completely different I don't have that safety and because I had the audience there then I was able to relax and enjoy it as much as I could even though I still run out of breath at the end of a phrase and Pavarotti did tell me that that um, Rodolfo would never have run out of breath at that particular moment um, but he did generally like my voice and he asked me to sing again so but, you walked out of there feeling good yeah but it but the flow of the story is exactly right because it didn't lead anywhere I, I still went home and had to go back to the job I was doing I yeah. had to go back to manual work yeah. and I had to go from being describing myself as a singer to going back as a shelf stacker which for me, it felt quite difficult because for for, for a, a couple of months I was able to describe myself as a singer, which is how I always wanted to be, but I never really saw it as being attainable. But for that brief period, I was able to live my dream and be a singer. This this little comparison, I have I have to mention it. You mentioned a Stedford. They used to have a, a commercial broadcasting section in the Sydney Stedford in mm. Australia. And I was too young and I put my age up and cracked the finals and then got up the stage in front of the whole audience and made an idiot of myself. I mean, I just walked off there knowing that I bombed badly. So I, I related to, to the way it's portrayed in there. Uh, the, um, the, what, I, what I really wanted to drive at with regard to dramatic license was your father. I was particularly intrigued with the relationship. Was that true? Or was that dramatised? Um, my dad was in a position where he, he didn't enjoy classical music. But was he, was he such it. a prick? <laughs> um, my, da my dad was definitely the disciplinarian in, in the family and he could be, um, he, he could be prickly. Um, and but, but he was portrayed as a... As a <laughs> Not a very nice man. Um, he he has he, he has his moments, um, as do we all, and um, and the, the power balance is, is 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 very accurate, um, as it is in many families. You know, the oh. the, the, the the father is always always feels like he's in charge, but it's, that's not how it works. It's the mother that's in charge. She just tells the father that he can be in charge. So it's yeah. really it's always the matriarch that really runs the family. It's, as as um, as Julie Walters plays so well in the film, it's, you know she she gets her way, and and that's usually the way. Were you were you treated as appallingly at school by the those other kids? Worse, I'd say. I, really, I, I asked them to play it down because I didn't want it to. I di I didn't want it to um, be a dark space that you couldn't get past. And if it was too dark, because like I kept certain issues out of the film, I, in in my autobiography, I've, I've talked about it in much more detail. And and it, it got to a stage, bullying got to a stage where people were trying to throw me through windows and throw bricks at me, and um, and all you know, seventy people on the coach all screaming things at me as the teachers just watched. And um, and that put me in a situation where. Um, I'd gone beyond the point of thinking about suicide. I'd actually, I'd actually thought that I didn't deserve to escape from life. That I, that I just had to suffer, it, and that was my punishment for being who I was. And and it got to a point where I, I suffered sexual abuse as well. Because if you, if you have no, if you feel you have no value, anybody that wants to do things to you will will be able to do that, and and you'll just let them because you don't. If you don't feel you have any value, then you won't oppose them. And of course, that just reinforces that thought. But I, I, were, I, I was, I didn't want these issues to be in the, in the movie because I always wanted it to be a comedy. And if you, and because I felt the message would come across better that way, because I think if you have a documentary, people think, oh, we, they're trying to teach us something. But that's not that's not always the best medium. I, I think sometimes you can you can show somebody something without teaching them. And often the best way of doing that is to have them laughing. And, and to move them as well, but to have them laughing and smiling as they leave the cinema. You've just told me something about yourself that requires um, a bit more space. In the movie, and folks, you've got, to, you've got to watch this movie. You do. Especially after hearing the interview, because you'll, you'll see in the movie things that, that Paul is now going into and explaining that I think are, are well, they're incredible. 
because it's bad enough in the movie with the way they treat those other kids treated you. Um, and I'm coming back to your father in a minute on this too, but where did you, this has contributed to the person you are. Mm. All of this has made you the person you are. And you are a person, and I've established that already, you're a person of considerable depth. And it's come from, you've risen above it and you've learned from it. And I don't think there's any other way of learning it other than uh, through experience in life. What was it that drove you? Was it the music that helped you through it? Was it something else? Did you read a book? Did somebody say something to you one day that triggered uh, a direction in life that, uh, that helped you? I don't think there's a book you can read that unlocks things. I think you can only unlock the door yourself. And I, for me, singing gave me a space that I belonged in. And there, there were times in my childhood when it was the only place I belonged. It was the only, and, and so singing has always felt like, it's always felt like a key opening a door into an area that was mine. And, and I belonged there. And, and to take the risk of taking up singing, for me, the majority of my life was something that I didn't really have the nerve to do because what you're doing is you're opening up that world. And <coughs> when you open that world, you're, you're not just letting the good things in. When you open the door, you let everything in. You can't, you can't put up a mesh that's, that, blocks, that blocks all the bad things in the way you do when you put a mosquito net. It, you, you have to let everything in and you have to, and, and that held me back because I was anxious about not allowing the the, the negatives in. I, I wanted the good things, but I knew that I couldn't I couldn't live life just having positive things because life isn't like that. That's that, that, that that's you know it's foolhardy to think otherwise. But I think you are the sum of all your experiences, and in some ways, whereas I'd I'd, I'd really in many ways I'd rather not have been through the things I've been through. I can't change what I've been through. All I can do is just try and keep going and and that and that really is the message of both the book and the movie that you have many obstacles in life but it's your responsibility as a person to keep going and what i found wasn't present in schools and which still isn't present in schools to the right extent because there's been in the uk just over the last three weeks there have been four suicides of teenagers who have found it too difficult to cope with bullying and Often you'll hear politicians talk about the fact that they want to see action. But they're, they're barking up the wrong tree because what they're trying to do is they're trying to create this ethos of zero tolerance, which yep. to me as a victim of bullying is completely meaningless. It means nothing. It, 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 the only thing it does is deal with things in statistics. Statistics have no emotions. People have emotions and they need, and children and adults, adults get bullied as well. They need somewhere to turn and they need somebody to speak to in a way that they don't have to lay blame anywhere because that blame cycle is, is it's, it, it's difficult and, and, and yes, people want to see somebody blamed and want to see somebody punished. I'd rather see bully, bullying victims get support and be able to talk about what they're going through without there being any sense of blame, without having to name people and for it to be to be that victim's decision whether any any action is taken and that be for that to be their decision. Well, we'll pick up on a couple of points after the break. 